Good news, you've survived Valentine's Day. It's the 15th. Also known as Cheap Candy Day. Yes, go get your cheap candy. So you can forget that awkward Valentine's Day that led nowhere and fuel your diabetes <laughs> in one swift stroke. Diabetes. For, for low cost. <laughs> oh, Lord. And, unfortunately, we're going to talk about security. So you're going to feel even worse about your life. Because <laughs> you're insecure. But we'll end up with nonsense. Maybe you can feel a little bit better laughing at other people's misfortunes. But first, let's talk about screen recording. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, ha screen recording. That's what happens to people that download those, you know, weird Chinese apps, right? Those beauty filter apps. I don't do that. I'm too smart. Well, there's some bad news. <laughs> Apple has told developers to disclose or remove screen recording code. So it turns out that this analytics company that we reported on last week and the week before and a couple of weeks before that, that analytics software is used in a lot of really popular app store uh, applications as well. <sighs> it's not who you think either. Uh, Expedia, Hollister, Hotels.com. Those are some apps that a lot of people might use. You think they're secure? No. Nope. They're actually recording the screen even when you're when that app is not active, which is bad news. And against terms of service. Yeah. So Apple has said, stop doing that or we're going to take you off. I bet once we find out everybody that was like, okay, we complied with this, the list will be a lot bigger. Yeah. This is for, you know, data tracking, ad targeting type of stuff. It probably can be used a little bit to improve your experience, but for the most part, I'd say they're just selling that data. They are definitely selling that data. Well, we talked about the FaceTime bug, where if you just change the volume, or uh, what else could you do? You could call somebody and they would not answer, but you would hear the mic and maybe see video. But you had to change the volume or do something else. But anyway, that was really easy to spy on people as long as they didn't answer the phone. Well, they fixed it. Apple has released an iPhone update to fix the group FaceTime eavesdropping bug. iOS 12.1.4 is now available. Now, I read some reports that said that Apple had fixed this by deploying an update, whether or not you wanted to. Like, they just installed it. But I need some more information on that. because and That doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. That was the case. There was also some question about were they going to pay the bug bounty? Because some kid found it. And Apple said they will. And, but they weren't going to at first. Yeah. And it pointed out something that a lot of people complain about, which is Apple's bug bounty program, first of all, only applies to iOS. It doesn't apply to a lot of their other products. And they'll kind of red tape you a lot. They'll yeah. turn you down. They'll keep you, they'll make you wait months and months and months to get your payout. A lot of people don't like it, especially this guy. <laughs> this re researcher reveals a huge Mac password flaw to protest the Apple bug bounty. So he hasn't released details of this, but he has released an application that will dump your Apple keychain, which is the thing that has all your passwords, um, and with no spe special privileges or any kind of anything like that. Because, again, macOS is second fiddle to iOS, and Apple just does not care about macOS anymore. And, more importantly, he didn't tell Apple anything about this. They found out about it when everybody else did. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> Well, there's no bug bounty. What do you expect? How quick? So they got on that iOS update in under a week. Yeah. How long do you think it'll take for Mac OS? I don't think Apple even cares. <laughs> like, honestly, they, they, there's so much they could be doing to make Mac OS better. And I, it's, I always hate when Apple is this in this weird, indeterminate middle thing. Because it's like, they obviously don't care about the product. They should open source it if they don't care about it. But they won't open source it because they feel like really hostile. They seem to feel really hostile toward open source if you look at some of their past actions. Yeah, but while they might not sell a ton of Macs, think about the profit margin on those Macs. Yeah, but I mean, the profit margin would seem to demand that they put some maintenance into the damn operating system. No, because you're not buying it. For the you, operating system? Yeah. yeah for, you just, you're not buying it for the operating system? It's good not, enough. You're not buying it for the hardware. Because yeah. if you cared about either of those things, <laughs> you wouldn't touch it. You're buying it for the brand. Yeah. And you're not going to buy anything else. Because why would you? You're completely spellbound. Huawei. We can't stop talking about Huawei. They're everywhere. <laughs> and in the EU, although, you know, it seems like the EU is... at skeptical of Trump's <laughs> claims about Huawei. We could say that, right? Yeah, I think that's probably accurate. But they have actually went to Huawei and they said, hey, we have some concerns about your security. 
And Huawei now has a response. <laughs> uh, Huawei's security issues will take five years to fix, the firm tells the commons. So, uh, you know, this, uh, there was an incident, I think, that led to an audit. And this is what came out of this audit. It's like, hey, you're going to need to change your products and make them more secure in this way, in this way, in this way. And they said three to five years to make those changes. Well, they said to make any progress. Yeah. That wouldn't even, I don't think they're even planning to complete it in five years. You won't even see a difference for five years, I think is what they're saying. I also thought the response was kind of hand wavy because they were like, look, a telecommunications network is hugely complicated and it's not like we can just roll out a fix tomorrow. They're architecturally insecure. And that is not untrue, but I think that that belies the, uh, the root problem, which is they need to do more. But compared to the other companies, do you think it's materially worse or is this just because it's in China? I th no, I think that, I mean, if we look at some of the security issues that have happened here, I mean, yeah. look at like, you know, Juniper and Cisco have had some face palm worthy security issues. Well, like Cisco's hard coded back doors. Every week. Like five times. Yeah, yeah. Every week Cisco had a major security flaw. So. Now, is that, uh, I, so I guess what we're saying is that that's incompetence and not maliciousness. Know, yeah. <laughs> but I can't, I don't think we can ever discount. No matter how much hyperbole we get from the governments, the Chinese government could very well be yeah. pulling the strings with Huawei. That's a total possibility. Don't trust anyone, basically. But it's also a total possibility the NSA is pulling the strings with Cisco or could be. Juniper. One Perhaps of those. more likely than not. <laughs> or RSA. They're pulling the strings with RSA. We, we talked know. in the last episode about that uh, Children's Watch had an API that didn't require authentication of any kind. If you knew the ID of your child's watch, anybody could hit that API and do a variety of things. If you didn't know the API, the, the key, uh, you could just look at all the children. Yeah, well, sure. Just guess. <laughs> just, you know, if you knew the length of the string, just iterate till you find some. Now, that's a terrible system. But with children's watches, I mean, a lot of people will be like, oh, they're our mo most precious commodity. No, they're not. <laughs> They're super easy to make. We're not going to run out of them. But one place where this could be a serious, serious problem is with the airlines. Now, the good news is the airlines would never use an API like that, right? Oh, uh, no. It turns out the uh, airline e-ticketing systems have put passenger data at risk. So, yeah, the e-ticketing system's not secured, and anybody can scrape the data. They send you an email link. That link has your ID. There's no authentication. You can view your passenger, you know, your flight data, and in some cases make changes. <laughs> your ID is number seven. Uh, what if I put number eight? Oh, welcome, Mr. Smith. <laughs> number nine, welcome, Mrs. Smith. Number 10. <laughs> so they talk about how you could, in some cases, I think it would be difficult with all the face recognition and like your passport getting through and everything. But if somebody's got that primo seat, you could be like, no, I'm canceling. Could do that. Yeah. <laughs> what, if you, what if it's full and you really want to get on that flight? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that's embarrassing what a time to be alive or plummeting to your death through the air that's <laughs> because the terrorists got on board uh gmail gmail has a really cool feature and you might not know about it but if you put a dot in your gmail address gmail ignores the dot doesn't care so if you're signing up for something annoying then you can put that dot in there and you know if they shared your email yeah you can place the blame. It also ignores everything after a plus symbol. Really, really, really cool feature. But turns out there's some problems with it. Scammer groups are exploiting Gmail accounts dot feature for online fraud. So for certain services where you have to provide an email, like a legit email to sign up, well, you can just enter 50 permutations of your email and they'll get 50 activation links. And it's, it's easy and convenient for the scammers to manage out of one account. And I, I imagine... Uh, we just before we started recording, we were talking about the perils of having older parents <laughs> in the technology world. And I am sure if my parents got a link that was from, you know, Apple, for example, and it was like, hey, we need you to click this verification link, they wouldn't question it at all. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I like Apple. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this came to my email address. This is legitimately from Apple.com. Can't argue with that. Let's go ahead and click that button. And that's what the scammers count on. They also, a uh, slightly different variation for this is googlemail.com and gmail.com 
work interchangeably. Well, that was because Germany. But it still works. Google, Gmail can't be Gmail in Germany. It's got to be Google Mail. Oh, because they already had a Gmail. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, you can use that as well and sign up for things and get it to the same address even though it's a unique login. Also, I think that's probably one of the reasons that the whole like free trial without a credit card has gone extinct. Too easy. Too easy to beat that. <laughs> oh, Lord. What if you figured out that there was a tiny, tiny window during the day when ATM withdrawals didn't actually affect your account? <laughs> what would you do? Uh, I think it's going to be Superman 2. It's like a software executive uh, exploits ATM loophole to steal a million dollars. The software chief tried to explain away his actions as an internal security test. So he did exactly that. He was testing the security, figured out the minute before midnight, ATM transactions weren't recorded. How did they not figure that out before? <laughs> well, you know, it's a bank. And <laughs> it's fine. So he set up a, a fake account to pull them from. But he realized that it would never get caught because the fake account would never devalue at all. And he pulled out a million dollars. Now, he was smart. I think he kind of was like, this is too good to be true. Let me play this safe. He didn't spend a dollar of that money. He kept it all. And when they caught him, he was like, oh, I'm just, I was just holding on to that. I was just seeing if you'd catch me. This was a security test. And he gave it all back. The bank was happy. <laughs> they were like, oh, wow, good catch. See you next Monday. The Chinese police, on the other hand, they didn't buy it. <laughs> so he's doing 10 years. <laughs> Oops. And the bank actually went to bat for him in the court case, which is maybe one of the reasons they have such bad security is they're so gullible. <laughs> <laughs> who would do that? Like, I'm going to have this open API. It's just all the children. Like, who would exploit that? It's like, I'm going to open this up. It's like, oh, it's a list of children in the area. I'm just going to close that because that's not something that I should see. <laughs> well, you got to say something. you got to report it. <laughs> see something, say something. Cover yeah. your tracks. A lot of people, there. so there is this ongoing debate are our phones listening to us? Yes. At all times? Unquestionably. Well, some people say you're crazy for thinking that. <laughs> They're oh. also recording the screen taps and stuff like that. Again, <laughs> that is a conspiracy theory. Completely unsubstantiated. <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory, and that must be removed from Facebook. But what if what if, what if we news. went just like pure tinfoil, and it was crazy, and was like, dude, there are microphones and devices that they don't even tell you about. <laughs> How insane is that? Nest Secure has an unlisted disabled microphone. Update, Google has confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so the Nest generally uses the uh, Google HomePod to communicate with it. That's It doesn't have a microphone. You use the HomePod's microphone to communicate with the Nest. But it turns out they do have microphones. They've always had them. They're just not enabled yet. But they also aren't listed in the parts list. <laughs> That's weird. That does seem a little weird, yeah. In a future update, they're going to turn them all on and you're going to be able to use them. But not yet. But they're definitely not listening all the time. Definitely. <laughs> definitely not. You'd have to be crazy to suspect something like that. Speaking of cameras on everybody's doorstep, which is becoming a very popular thing, Amazon has an interesting system set up for those. Amazon's home security company is turning everyone into cops. Neighbors, a social media crime reporting app owned by Amazon, creates a digital ecosystem in which you are encouraged to assume the worst about your neighbors. Uh, so this story is about a neighborhood where packages are stolen, but it paints a picture where, let's say, every, you know, like the Ring doorbell cameras and the Nest cameras and Amazon's home security cameras. Let's say that, you know, everybody in your neighborhood has these. What if everybody got together and connected all of their security devices to one thing in the cloud. So if something is stolen off of your porch, your neighbors have a good view of that from the other side, from across the road. Maybe your neighbor down the road at the corner catches the car as it turns left onto the main highway. Wouldn't it be convenient if neighborhoods had access to all this data everybody's collecting individually? And that's basically what they built. It's called Neighbors. It's basically a Facebook for Ring doorbell owners. Something weird happens, you post a screenshot, you post a timestamp, hey, anybody else see this? Now, because this is a Vice article, it immediately devolves into race and gender. Yeah. 
and 90% of this is just garbage. But they do bring up a disturbing thing of what kind of world are we living in where, and, and you can sort of see this, like, you know, I hate to make the comparison, but the Nazis. <laughs> neighbors, ratting out neighbors. Yeah. That was a big part of it. And it was almost like you got brownie points. There's a for, twist on it here, though. It, and that's, it's not necessarily neighbors ratting out neighbors. It's like neighbors banding together against like one neighbor that may be a little uh, operating a little bit below the law. But also, I think there's an element of, I, it's kind of like Facebook, right? Yeah. It's, it's not quite a like button, but I need to post something today. Yeah. Did anything weird happen? Yeah. Oh, please let something weird happen because I want to make a post today. Well, okay. So it's like, this is about stealing packages. It's like somebody stole a package. It's like, how cool? I mean, I think that would be cool if I, you know, I've ordered something off Amazon mm -hmm. and the package gets stolen. And it's like, you mean I can just click a few buttons? And because it talks about API access. And it's like, in the future, maybe we can just have access to this. And you can just, it's like the package was stolen. I can just look through your devices for your outside cameras and see you know, what, uh, see, you know, who stole my package and we can find that person. We can hunt them down. They may not even be from our neighborhood. Let's, let's hunt them down. But how long until like the neighborhood association is like, you didn't bring your curb, your trash can in soon right. enough, or, you know, you're not, you're cutting your, uh, lawn an hour too late or an hour too early or, or something like that. Think about this homeowners association demands your API. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you agreed to yeah. that. And it's like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with you because you oh. guys are like little Napoleons. Then we're going to foreclose. Yeah. Or, hey, I caught Bob coming home the other day. He was wearing a MAGA hat. <laughs> Let's burn his house. Oh, so-and-so is having an extramarital affair. Post it on the internet. <laughs> Jeff <Like>. Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, law enforcement will have access to all this as well. Like, it's just one court order mm -hmm. away from. Right. And then now it's explain yourself. It's a terrible, terrible thing. But how are you going to stop it? Because you can't stop somebody from filming on their own property. Right. So this is coming. This is going to be a world we live in. Yep. Maybe we got to get some of those uh, Russian you're literally, anti devices. You're going to literally have to participate in order to have more evidence of your innocence than <laughs> circumstantial evidence of your guilt. That's not how the burden of proof works. <laughs> it is now, damn it. <laughs> well, it, you you're going to have... A camera, you have to get it. It's an arms race, right? Yeah. And while you're at it, why don't you just go ahead and get an Internet of Things refrigerator? <laughs> Thousands of industrial refrigerators can be remotely defrosted thanks to default passwords. They got a little table down here, and it's like, cheese fridge one is defrosting. And it's like, <laughs> no, the cheese, no. Well, more importantly, these are industrial units. Yeah. So it's got a lot of cheese. You won't actually have this in your home, but you know who might have it? hospitals <laughs> blood bank one is defrosting and because these are giant industrial units even if you don't have anything important in there the amount of frost is going to turn into water yeah and that has to go somewhere and you would plan for that if you plan to defrost but if you if it was saturday night and nobody was working and you start the defrost that's going to be a problem come monday <laughs> it's going to be bad news for the opener on monday so that is a just a default password problem. Now, the company says we're not to blame. Read the manual. It says change the password. But the Shodan database shows <laughs> a lot of these refrigerators run on the default password. Yeah. And they do have names that describe exactly what's in them, which uh, that's. Uh, and now that it's in the news, all oh, those yeah. 4chan hackers are just, they're having a great weekend. Defrosting fiends. They got nothing to do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> the defrost refrigerators. <laughs> all those nice restaurants, they'll time it oh, so that the all the cheese has gone bad. All the Valentine's dates will have to be canceled <laughs> because the refrigerator died during the night. Just Sorry, sir. There's no brie for your salad. It's just going to smell like dead meat, <laughs> rotten meat in those restaurants. Oh. I don't know about you, but when I call up a company and I get the automated voice line, I immediately get angry. <laughs> And apparently a lot of people do that because they're working on it. Uh, Effectiva's AI, here's your anger in 1.2 seconds. Uh, the the picture that I have in my mind is from the movie Elysium where like the guy is interacting with like the robot and it's like, 
you're becoming agitated, sir. Blah. And it's just like very calm, but also kind of condescending, even though it's technology. And this, this is where we're headed with the AI. It's like, you're going to be really angry. And it's like, I can tell that you're angry, sir. Please be calm. I was like, ah! She's desperately trying, like, t- trying to tell you bad jokes or something. <laughs> but yeah, this AI, they fed it uh, video, I think. And it started to learn the correlation using video. But then they took the video away from it. Yeah. So that just with the voice, it could start. And so 1.2 seconds, it could figure out if you're angry at it or not. Probably a wealth of people being angry at those kinds of systems. Oh, to, yeah. I don't know about video. Definitely. We live in a world where a lot of people do video communications. That's one of the things, I feel like it took a lot longer to catch on yeah. than you would expect. Well, it's because it's too clunky. you got to be able to like call somebody with video as easy as a phone call. Yeah, we still don't have that. But I think the younger generation, you know, with the, the FaceTiming and the, all that stuff, they're getting there. But it can be embarrassing. What if your room is messy or... You know, you, there's some people back there that don't want to be part of the call or there's a dead hooker. There could be a lot of things that could be a problem with the background of your call. And Microsoft has an answer. Microsoft has bring, is bringing AI-powered background blurring to Skype. So, yeah, it's like your webcam is real crappy. Its depth of field is, is infinite. And uh, this will hopefully fix that in software. You think we're ever going to see a video... Where, you know, it's just like some young girl is FaceTiming and she's like, oh, you're having a good time. And then there's like just a mass sort of growing behind her and then it murders her. <laughs> just like a, a like a black blur. It's, it's like it's the blur that just becomes a knife. <laughs> That'd be a cool shot in a movie. Yeah. I um, want royalties if you use that. I, people notice this too. Like, so I do a lot of video conferencing and, and one of the setups has like one of the nice cameras on it. And so it's got a nice depth of field and it's focused on me and the background is blurred and everybody... Whenever I have to do those those video conference calls, everybody is like, "Wow, you know, what kind of a setup do you have? This looks amazing!" And it's just like, eh. although I think a lot of people who do that kind of thing carefully sculpt the background. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've yeah. definitely done that. And I, yeah. <laughs> and like, but I want to show off my background. I've got my Nixie tube clock and my wall of monitors. It's great. It's totally great. Moving on to the A. Well, that was that was an AI article because they're using AI to do that. We didn't mention that part. But another thing that AI is doing is it's fighting that last mile of spam, that hardest <laughs> ground to cover. Gmail is now blocking 100 million extra spam messages every day with AI. I feel like the, the false positives are, are really ramping up, though. Yeah, that, and this is probably, a even though it's a small amount of actual spam blocks, probably a huge amount of false positives. Yeah. But they're using their TensorFlow thing, and they've adapted it to... Try it. So it looks at those messages that pass the spam filter, but based on your interaction with Gmail and the sender's interaction with Gmail, they try to find patterns to go ahead and block it. I think Gmail does a pretty good job, though, with spam. It gets most of them. It, it does a pretty good job. I would agree with that. StarCraft, AI has mastered it. A lot of, you know, we did the StarCraft story, and there were a couple of comments like, these people are washed up has beens at StarCraft. <laughs> but they could be super like impressive. 80% of the population. Yeah. So really, are they that bad? No. Just because they're not at the, you know, Come on. top of the ladder. Come on. But if some people were discounting, it's like, oh, the AI is kind of shitty. Uh, Go, chess. Um, what's that other game that's really good at? Anyway, these AIs are just dominating games. But this game. Is a little bit different. AI is playing Pictionary to figure out how the world works. This is a cool little video over here. So it actually translates all of your little drawings into these icons. And you take turns. You try to guess, and then the AI tries to guess. <laughs> and you can actually play this game right now. Uh, what was the, the link? It's in there somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, you can click on the one tab, but you can go. You can play Pictionary all day long with an AI if you want to. You know, if you don't have any, all this is after Valentine's Day. Yeah. I was going to say this could be an alternate plan for Valentine's Day. <laughs> no, that's fine. The, uh, what was the name of the AI that gets you your parking ticket defeated? Uh, that's, the, that's mentioned in the article. I can't uh, remember the name of it, though. I can't remember either. But anyway, there's an AI... 
that will fight parking tickets. And it's amazingly good at it. 160,000 tickets saved. So there's and, real people that are looking at it. It's just the AI helps them. And they can just run through like super fast. Well, they've expanded its arsenal. <laughs> Air helps new bots collect airline compensation for packages. So if you've booked a flight and they've lost your luggage or your luggage was delayed or your flight was delayed or whatever, you may be entitled to compensation. This bot will help you get it. Airlines hate it. <laughs> they talk about how it's like this is not actually the bots are taking jobs, but the, the company that's behind this is like, look, we would not be able to afford to do this if it weren't for AI and bots to help with this because we have real people. There's actually two bots, like a agent helper and like a do, a docky, and those two agents do different things with like the uh, interface for the airlines, but they're really tools to help uh, human beings automate their workflow to collect compensation on behalf, behalf of passengers. And that's how they make their money. But if it was a manual process, there's not enough margin here for uh, it to be done for by, you know, by human beings. And if you had to do it yourself, you probably wouldn't get enough back yeah. to account for the hours that you spent dealing with it. Yeah. It's kind of like that story about the uh, Pacer system. It's a system where they give you an avenue to resolve these things, but they make it so that you won't do it. Yeah. They try to make it impossible. And the AI is able to cut through all that. The airline screwed up. You can get $15 back, but only after you've spent four hours dealing with nonsense. Right, yeah. And it's like, well, that's even less than minimum wage, so why even bother? Now, you just let the robot do it. I wonder if how hard they're lobbying to make that illegal. Oh, pretty hard, I'd say. <laughs> this story's weird. I don't know if CNN Business got something wrong here, but <laughs> this video... <laughs> Well, yeah, I, look, did, I didn't understand the video at all. So the video is about cats interacting with these little robots. <laughs> but the headline is about spices. The world's biggest spice company is using AI to find new flavors. It's Old Bay. Old Bay is looking for new flavors for people using well, AI. McCormick owns Old Bay. Yeah, but okay. That's fine. Remember uh, New Bay? <laughs> that story about New Bay? B-A-E? Oh, yeah. They had a new spice that they sued them. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of like those AIs that will search for new materials just by studying how the base parts interact. We need the new allspice. They're, that's pretty much what they're doing. They're like, hey, these spices and these foods tend to go together and we like these results. Just try to come up with something new. And they take it in the kitchen, they try it out and see what they got. They do talk about it get a little weird at first because... You have to give it really specific rules because they're like, hey, we want to season some rice. We want like a good rice seasoning. And they ran it through the AI and what came out the other end chose to remove the rice. <laughs> but they said it turned out to be like a really good all-purpose spice that came out the other end. Well, you know, I mean, I saw Iron. The, there was this uh, Iron Chef show once where the guy took like a million lobsters and used that to like infuse the flavor of something else. And celery. Then, yeah, and then he threw away the lobsters. He like put the celery in the lobsters. <laughs> Cooked it. Took the celery out through the lobsters away. You gotta think like... And when Brilliant. They, when they took that and uh, syndicated it to like starving countries, the people were looking at it like, what? You threw away the lobsters? <laughs> <laughs> the another thing that AI has been known to do is to predict things like crime. We had uh, Palantir. We have the Amazon still around. the Amazon uh, image recognition, face recognition thing that they're using in law that enforcement. That is in more places than it really should be. Google attempted to do it with the drones, which is kind of like a crime. Made, made some employees upset. Terror doing prediction it it's secretly. Kind of the same thing. And it turns out the UK is doubling down. <laughs> the crime prediction software has been adopted by 14 UK police forces. So we're just we're, we're putting a little anchor, a little placeholder here so that we, we can call back to this moment right now in the future and say, this did not go well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apart from the Orwellian aspect here, which should be obvious, hopefully. If it's not, you should go read that book. 1984, I'm referencing there, because it should be super obvious. <laughs> but aside from that, one thing about uh, these prediction softwares is that they can tend to be biased. Yeah. Because the data will, they're not inherently biased, 
But the data will lead them to conclusions just because it's incomplete. You are a poor person. Also, you are a black person. You need to be preemptively incarcerated. The other thing about this that I think BBC really kind of just just papered over is that they are assigning a score, <laughs> much like the Chinese social score. But you can't see why it has that score. Yeah, right. But you have a score which presumably you can never escape. Yeah. And so the AI... If it thinks you're going to commit a crime today, it isn't going to change its mind tomorrow. If the AI has assigned you a low score because you are poor, that is different than the AI assigning you a low score because you were uh, in violation of your parole for carrying a firearm. Yeah. And the hilarious thing is, of course, they point out they're using it because of the rash of knife crimes. (laughs) Every time I think about the phrase knife crimes, I have to laugh a little bit. (laughs) If your family was a victim of knife crime, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Well, I do mean to belittle it a little bit because we all have knives. (laughs) There's literally one on the desk. I have one in my pocket. (laughs) Artificial intelligence has taught us all these things. It's given us scores. It's made our spices. It's given us new materials. And now it's unlocked a dark part of our history. (laughs) We have a hidden member of our family tree. Is this like... Cousin Eddie, who's a different race, and like no one talks about Cousin Eddie. Well, it'd have to be a different species. <laughs> Artificial into Well, see, the species, though, I mean, we have an ancestor that is present in our DNA that is heretofore undiscovered. Although they talk about one of the discoveries, there was a, a teenage girl found in a cave that was like uh, super old, maybe one of this missing species. So it's like Neanderthal and Denisovian had interbred, and so there should have been a very large population to support this much genetic material in modern humans. The thing I love about all that, you know, evolutionary human past stuff is that you get the idea that they clearly knew that this other group was a little bit different, but they didn't even stop a millisecond to think, we shouldn't bang that. (laughs) It's just like... Ah, it makes you wonder how modern racism came to be. It appears that our genitals are uh, compatible. <laughs> Let's test that theory. <laughs> and they, yeah, that's true. Well, racism tends to break down when it comes to breeding. Mm. I mean, you know, that's mm. uh, one of the things about, you know, growing up in the, the sticks like we did <laughs> is we had two black guys at our high school, two. And they never wanted for female attention because as soon as those girls hit that like rebellious stage, the more racist daddy was, the more they ran into these guys' arms. So, you know, they probably they suffered a lot of racism in that school. I don't doubt that a bit, but they got some positives as well. Bees. Speaking of positives and negatives. We're killing all of our bees we still, are. as far as I know. We are. And that's it's bad because our bees do a lot for us that you might not even know about. And I, I'm going to admit that I probably don't even know the extent of the bees. Certainly not their ability to perform mathematics. <laughs> bees can solve math problems with addition and subtraction. So the scientists set up a really clever experiment using colors and shapes. And they conditioned the bees so that if they did the math problem correctly... They would get a reward. Otherwise, they got a quinine, I think, yeah. as a punishment. And so uh, they figured in, in order to get the reward, the bees would have to reason correctly about addition or subtraction. And so then they ran the bees through a couple of tests uh, to see if they would uh, do the math correctly without the reward being present, and they did. Although they only got 65%. So mm. I don't think that that means that bees can't do math. I think it means that only some really gifted bees can do math. <laughs> Most of the bees are morons. But it's the bees only have like a million neurons, which is a shockingly low number to uh, be able to understand abstract concepts. Because as, was it Carl Sagan says? You know, the number zero has an elaborate logical underpinning. That was the other thing. They could understand nothing. And apparently most animals can't do that. You yeah. don't have a concept of the absence of a thing. Which is interesting. I guess that explains why, you know, when you feed your animals, they can't really grasp the fact that there's no food left in the bowl. (laughs) Feed Uh, me more. I must eat more. It's like, what? No. This story, I find it 
not surprising. <laughs> but I also don't think, I mean, the question here is, I, this kind of goes back to the paperclip phase. Were those rockets any less useful because they killed thousands of people in London? <laughs> Call for retraction of 400 scientific papers amid fears that organs came from Chinese prisoners. So this story starts with uh, livers. And so there were Chinese hospitals that had way more viable livers than they had <laughs> deaths of a certain type. It was 10,000 deaths. And you don't get all 10,000 of those livers. It's like one in three. To explain 100,000 liver transplants. <laughs> <laughs> we cut the livers into small pieces <laughs> and grew them artificially. And oh, you can't do that, can't yeah, you? Yeah. So how do you explain that? The prison system. Yeah. So. They killed the prisoners and harvested their organs. Turns out. Which, in RimWorld, they, you can't do that. <laughs> well, you can do it, but the colonists hate it. Which shows you that Chinese citizens are much less sensitive than the people of RimWorld. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, so they did studies based on these 100,000 liver transplants. And we presumably learned something about liver transplants. That's a lot. It's a lot of data. Do we throw that data out because some Chinese prisoners died to bring it to us? Mm. I mean, it's not like we can put those livers back. I guess, do you think just ignoring the data would discourage them from doing it in the future? I don't think it would. I don't think that it would discourage them. Although that's the idea is that... If the, the research is ignored, if the scientists are shunned, that we won't have this in the future. It's a difficult call. I was looking forward to Chris's reaction to our next story. <laughs> I think she would be horrified. I was going to suggest this should be the honeymoon. <laughs> yes, horrification confirmed. <laughs> you can now finally spend a night in a hotel shaped like a bum hole. Yeah, winners. This it's literally like a section of intestine and a sphincter. Well, it's the colon. Here's the hole. There it is. You do not actually enter and exit through that. That just ruins it for me. Yeah, they've got some other pictures down here to show. Yeah, so they like here's the entrance, just the door. <laughs> I like the veins. Yeah, yeah, it's very and also the inside. <laughs> I got some pictures. So these walls are also patterned like the inside of the colon. Nice. I don't know if the inside of your colon is white. I doubt it. But yeah, you got a tub that's sort of like, you know, also colon wall shape. You got this little artsy table. And then there's a bed behind that. And uh, it's pretty reasonable. I think it's like less than $200 a night. $136. Now, it is in the middle of nowhere. That's a problem. So you're basically, uh, there's a museum there. And there's just the one. Two, I think. Oh, was it? I thought the other one was some other theme other than... No, but see, I think this is a room and this is a room. Oh. oh, oh. So you can either get the ass end or the intestine end. <laughs> <laughs> you think you can... It's like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. The ass end is booked that week. <laughs> can I offer you the intestine end? <laughs> well, there's a museum and you get uh, breakfast and a day pass to the museum with that $137. Well, we've got to do a level one... Vacation video. All right. Something. Well, I'm taking the ass end. <laughs> uh, I have seen a lot of cheap projectors on sale. Ubiquitous technology. Like ubiquitous projector technology is becoming a thing. Yeah. And you can really get a bargain on them. It used to, I mean, projectors used to be a huge expense. And the more they come out, I think the more we're going to see stuff like this. Adult film has been screened on Garage for the entire neighborhood, and it has led to an arrest. A Newport News neighborhood's innocence was compromised Wednesday evening <laughs> when an adult film was projected for an entire neighborhood to watch. Now, you know, I've seen stuff like this happen before. Usually the audio delivery is not too much of an issue, but the article makes it sound like the audio was a was sort of a problem, too. And there were kids that were like, what's going on with that? Oh, yeah, I didn't think about the audio. Well, probably like a Bluetooth speaker or something. It would have had to, it can't, can't have been much, but yeah. the, one of the neighbors complained that they could hear it. So, yeah, I don't know what this guy's motivation was. They said he was crazy. Yeah, they said that he set a bonfire in his, garage, in his uh, driveway as well. Yeah, so I, I don't know what would motivate someone to do that, but it would be hard to stop if more people wanted to copy that. You don't even necessarily have a good idea of where it's coming from 
uh, depending on how the image is distorted. Like you could project onto your neighbor's house, and they might not see where it's coming from. Well, right he did. Away. I think he projected onto a nearby building, <laughs> so he didn't have like a screen or anything set up. <laughs> this is amazing. What's but, this? I got to take this thing for a test drive. I know just the content. Well, here's the thing. He might have <laughs> even gotten away with it. But for some reason, he left the projector on the porch. Overnight. <laughs> so when the cops got there, the project, the, the smoking projector was still there, which couldn't have been good for it. I didn't even think that was a crime, officer. I mean, <laughs> we have in this country, at least, and I think probably worldwide, a constant debate that it's been debunked probably a hundred times at this point, <laughs> which is that violent movies and video games cause people to become more violent, and it keeps popping up. And it has popped up again. <laughs> this is actually a follow-up because this is in Pennsylvania. And the tax on violent video games to pay for school safety, that's one lawmaker's suggestion. This is the same guy that we reported on a couple of weeks ago where uh, they were trying to do um, uh, taxes on technological stuff for, you know, it's like this is there's a relation here. There's not a relation. There's not a relation. So this guy wants 10% of all mature and what's the other rating? There's another rating for violent video games. He wants every game sold like that. You could have a mature rating without violence. Yeah. What about all those... Uh, what about Doki Doki Literature Yeah, Club? yeah, those anime <laughs> hentai games. Well, Although not, not Doki that. Doki Doki had, had some violence in it. <laughs> Probably not the kind they're talking about. But that all that, that 10% is taken and it goes toward some kind of school protection fund. I don't even know what they would do with that money. Why don't we put tax the internet and use that to pay for analog telephones? You're, related, saying right? you're saying there's as much as a correlation? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, some people do. I think it's it's easy to, it's something easy to blame. Yeah. You're always looking for something easy. It's like, oh, we're not broken as a society. Our children are not out of their minds because we don't parent them. <laughs> no, no. It's Call of Duty. Clearly. Uh, so, well, Valentine's Day, people tend to desperately try to find a mate for Valentine's Day. It's like that one time of the year where you want to prove that you can actually do that. And <laughs> <laughs> so now that Valentine's Day is over, you might find yourself ghosted by your date. Yeah. She's used you for a free meal. She had, she got her social media postings, you know, she got to wear that nice dress. It's like a praying mantis. And yes, I'm gendering because <laughs> it's most likely to be in that direction. So you're angry and you want to lash out. How do you do it? Uh, the zoo is holding a contest for you to name a snake after your ex. So if, is your ex a snake? Well, have this, this zoo's snake named after your ex. It's a brown snake, one of the most venomous in Australia, which of course... The most venomous country in the world. So you can imagine that's a pretty potent snake. If you win the contest, you will also get a lifetime pass to come and visit it. Snakey McSnakeface. I, I <laughs> doubt that anyone has an ex-girlfriend named Snakey McSnakeface. But maybe. Wouldn't that be a coincidence if that happened and they won this contest? <laughs> that's got to be lottery level of statistics. Now, Wendell, one thing I know about you. You are constantly eating while looking at your phone. Yes. So I imagine that you run into the problem of having greasy and or otherwise fouled fingers. My phone is disgusting. When you ch so this product might appeal to you. <laughs> Drinkable potato chips. The product's keeping your phone grease-free. The video actually talks about other products. Uh, my favorite product for keeping your phone grease-free that has been tried in the past was the Fryless from but, McDonald's. Well, <laughs> Let, let's go back to the fry. Oh, no, you're talking about the... I liked the other fry thing, the fry holder thing, <laughs> which didn't talk about how you got the fries into it in the first place. <laughs> yeah, where it was like... And yeah, yeah. But I, I think drinkable is false advertising here. Yeah, it's more like powdered crackers in a bag. It's like the bottom of the Pringles can. Yeah, yeah, you just but turn you, it up. But if and, you try to drink that, you're yeah. going to inhale it, and that's gonna you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> have you ever done that with crackers? I've done that with crackers <laughs> accidentally. I, 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 it was, uh, I, uh, I got a spoonful of chili that had like the crumbled crackers on top, but it was mostly crackers, and I didn't realize. And something happened, and I, I took a breath. But it wasn't like a sharp breath, and I just inhaled those crackers. Yeah. It was bad. You know, that's why you can't do... The cinnamon challenge. 
because you will inevitably get so, some of it into yeah. your your breathing canals, and then and then it's all over. It starts a process. <laughs> so here they are. This is, I guess, this is a Japanese product, but it is basically just a crushed bag of chips. Yeah. I mean, converting a regular bag of chips to this is maybe one of the easiest things in the universe. Listen, the fry list is infinitely more useful. Oh, well, let's take a look at some alternatives. <laughs> so this was a little gripper arm to pick up potato chips with just your thumb as the actuator. That's not too terrible, but I think the problem with this thing is when you get down to the powder part of the chips, it's, not gonna work. it's useless. I guess you could just drink those then at that point. Well, mm. <clears throat> then here we have the fork. Now... <laughs> The fork only works if you preload it. It makes no sense at all. <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? Obviously a marketing campaign. But as you said, the fryless. <laughs> did that really come with a McDonald's thing? Or did For a while, just... it did, yeah. Wow. And you know, basically, it's just like the, the little pins you can buy to, to swipe on your smartphone. Well, phone. this separates the men marketing companies from the boy marketing companies right here because the marketing company that came up with the Fryless, they've got the goods. The uh, the other companies, just their Well, posters. I think the marketing company that came up with the Fryless had at least one engineer working on it. <laughs> he was like, why don't we just do a stylus? And then somebody was like, you mean a Fryless? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you watch the level one news. <laughs> <laughs> and or or maybe a patron. <laughs> oh, we're losing those patrons. Discord. Now, Discord has in the past been accused of doing a little bit of data scraping from its users. Yeah. It has become unpopular for a, a variety of other reasons. And always there's been arguments about overzealous moderators. But we had no idea. <laughs> Discord comes under fire for alleged moderator abuse and furry corruption. Furry, furry corruption. corruption. You know, I don't care what kind of business you're in. Whether you make toothpicks or you launch rockets, furry corruption is something you always have to be vigilant against. <laughs> I uh, was very surprised that they were able to make an article this long out of furry corruption. <laughs> yeah, it goes pretty deep. <laughs> to try and not go as deep and not spend as long on it, it turns out that a lot of the Discord moderators are furries, which I, I don't know how you get. Cool. I, I mean, I guess like they invite their other furry friends and it just sort of builds from there. But the thing that they were trying to uh, eradicate were underaged pornographic photos, which, hey. Yeah, you ha you kind of have to do that. You need to get that off your service. Yeah. You know, that's going to be nothing but headaches for you. If but you also that. suggestive imagery as well. Now, here's where it gets weird. One of the most powerful furry mods posted, I think on Twitter, that Cub Play, now I had not previously heard of Cub Play. Have you heard no, of No, I had no idea. So Cub Play is a uh, furry version of uh, pedophilia, basically, like young animals. But it's animals. Well. It's animals on animals. Is it animals or is it? People Anthropomorphized as animals. animals. Well, well, some of it was like artwork, and like because the Discord people actually wanted the uh, the real Discord people was on record as saying this is kind of a weird gray area because it's like mythical animals <laughs> right. and like right. and it's artwork. So, but they said it might be okay. Yeah, but why would it? You know, I I, I just I thought know. about this. Sonic had tails was young. Tails was like much younger. That's not good. Oh, there's so much of that out there, I bet. <laughs> Don't link to it. It's the it's like there's that Aristotelian friendship relationship between Sonic and Tails. That's not <laughs> <laughs> only about four percent of the audience gets that, but the do the four percent that do are really horrified. <laughs> Maybe some of them are like Sonic wearing a Spartan helmet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it came out this whole big thing where the mods were pro furry. And they were allowing the weird furry stuff, but not regular porn. And it's just... It's, it's a amazing. mess. <laughs> and this is in the tech and science section of Newsweek. So, Newsweek. Maybe they don't have a nonsense section. Maybe they should get one. <laughs> We've talked about so many challenges here. Uh, just quickly, there was the hot water challenge. There was the uh, cinnamon challenge, as we talked about. Um, we talked about the ice bucket challenge way back. The ghost riding one where you walk next to your car that's still running. <laughs> ice bucket. There's the bird box challenge. Remember the bird box challenge? So many more that we're not thinking of. 
And the newest one is kind of a reimagining of an old favorite. <laughs> the boiling water challenge is sending people to the hospital. So this one doesn't sound as bad as some of the other challenges because it's not like pouring boiling water on somebody. Things have, We've had record cold here in North America. And so the idea was you take boiling water and throw it into the air and it gets frozen. Well, it we've all out. seen videos of that. Yeah, People are very bad at throwing boiling water. Well, they, they either get too much water because if you have a lot more water then, you know, water that holds together doesn't cool as fast. Yeah. Or they just don't estimate the temperature correctly. Yeah. You know, they don't realize yeah. that it needs to be really cold. To <laughs> it's do. 30 degrees outside. It'll freeze immediately. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's like, like no. oh, I want to be part of this. <laughs> Let's see, what is it outside? 36, boil some water. <laughs> <laughs> so as you might imagine, they throw the water into the air to watch it, you know, turn into steam immediately. And it falls back to their face, still boiling. Yeah. And they go to the emergency room. Challenge failed. Because they've been burned. <laughs> but I like the idea of there's something called the boiling water challenge. And somebody's clicking on that and they're like, I need to be a part of this. <laughs> it takes all kinds. This seems like something I want to do. No. So they actually, it's funny because, you know, it's like the last part of this article, they say, we know that, you know, it sounds fun to do the boiling water challenge, but you should leave it to the professionals. And it seems so... Professional boiling water challenge enthusiasts? It's so infantilizing where it's like, no, no, stupid people. <laughs> Don't screw around with boiling water. But then you realize that some people actually need that. Well, listen, that when you get burned, you're going to have to climb right, right back on that boiling water horse. <laughs> keep practicing until you... You boil double the amount of water. <laughs> and you keep throwing it in your face. <laughs> You can build up an immunity over time. They also talk about, uh, and I, I wouldn't have immediately thought about this either. I wouldn't throw boiling water into the air, but I wouldn't have thought about this. If you throw it up and it's it's cold enough to cool it, but not freeze it, when it lands on you, it will flash freeze. And that's coming off with skin. Mm. Yeah. So a couple of people. It's like the Ralph, when Ralph licked the telephone pole and his tongue got stuck to it. It's similar flash to freeze. that. Yeah, it's uh. just as bad to have water on your skin that immediately freezes as it is to have a boiling water. Or maybe not as bad, but close to as bad. You don't want either of those things. No matter how many Instagram likes. You, can you like on Instagram? Whatever Instagram does. Instagram with Facebook at the helm is not long for this world. Well, is that going to get, that's not going to get integrated, right? No. I'm sure it will eventually. Did anybody like SoftBank invest in Facebook? We need to watch for them to pull their investment. No, I think it's mostly just him and the public shares, right? Oh, that's scary. It's really scary. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you next week. Be back next week. Maybe Chris will join us. Definitely. Who knows? I don't don't promise that. <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. I really don't. We don't even know where she is. She might be right now. She might be doing the boiling water challenge, <laughs> and it is above freezing here, so she's in trouble. See ya. Okay.